Hey guys, Fraser here. Listen to the full episode of Unraveling the Son-in-Law exclusively on Pocket FM app. Click the link in description to install the app now. Here we are. To be honest, I never stopped thinking about your hot body. Whenever I made love to my loser husband, I always thought about you. Ha! Huh. Fraser never had a chance. Forget that loser. Come here. Make love to me right now, Mose. Your wish is my command. Mose? Mose! Mose! Uh, yes. Are you all right? Mose, the creepy executive at Philly Group, was obsessed with Natalia, the business director and troubled wife of Frazier, who was given an impossible challenge of selling a hundred properties within 24 hours. Mose couldn't wait to humiliate Frazier and sleep with his wife. They're here. Well, it's showtime. Frazier and Natalia walked into the office. The employees were giggling and mocking the couple for failing to complete the impossible task, selling 100 properties in 24 hours. Peter, the manager, was itching to kick Frazier out of the company. Let's not waste time, Frazier. Your stuff's already packed. Get lost. Hold that attitude. There's still time. Huh. Hold your wife's hands before I steal her away for the time of her life. Get ready, Natalia. Don't get too ahead of yourself, you jerk. <laughs> Come on. Accept your defeat. You're dead. Unless God himself walks in and buys 100 properties in the next five minutes. <laughs> God. Ah, uh, maybe someone like God. Right on cue, four bodyguards walked in the middle of the Philly Group's office, guarding the president of the biggest corporate in town, Mr. Henry Wilson, and he had an announcement to make. I want to buy 100 properties, right now. Didn't you hear that? I said right now. Of course, Mr. Wilson. I have been waiting for you. Mr. McElmore, why are you- Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson immediately realized what the game was. It wasn't every day that someone as big as Mr. Fraser McElmore dressed up as a salesperson and fooled the crowd. Mr. Wilson played along. Ah, yes, Fraser. Apologies for being late. What the hell is he doing here, Peter? I have no idea. Go attend to him before this loser ruins it for us. Ah, Mr. Wilson, my apologies. What a pleasant surprise! A hundred properties! Have I heard that right? Yes, and right away! Of course, sir! Just a moment! Frazier, go arrange for some coffee in my cabin for both of us and leave the business to us big boys. Off you go. How dare you! I'm sorry, sir. He's just... Who the hell is in charge here? Good morning, sir. This is Mose Furlan, the executive of Philly Group, and- Cut the crap! I want this man gone right now! Sir, may I ask why? Get him out or get out, Mose! Ah, uh, of course, sir, yes. Peter, get your stuff and get out of here right now! But sir, all these years I- It's all business, Peter, and I'm a businessman. Don't make me call security. Mr. Wilson's bodyguards dragged a pleading Peter out of the building. Everyone around was stunned in silence. It was rare to watch bullies get their due. Let's get back to business, shall we? Yes, sir. A 100 properties. We'll get on it right away. Uh, uh, not you. I want these sales to be credited to Fraser. It would be an honor, Mr. Wilson. Thank you. Fraser? How did you... When... Not now, Natalia. We'll tell you later. Sir, this man has never done a sale in his life. Yet he made your biggest sale. Hope you're not blind. So on that note, Mr. Mose Freeland, why don't you apologize to the best salesman in the office? In front of everyone. I would never. Never say never. Like you said, it's business, Mose. Or I can call your father, Mr. Victor Freeland. Victor Freeland was the head of the Philly Group and a dear friend of Henry's father. Mose knew that this could jeopardize his dream of taking over his father's company. Everyone in the office took out their phones to record this momentous event. Mose had no other choice but to swallow his pride. 
Mr. Fraser, on behalf of the Philly group, I apologize. Louder! Couldn't hear you, Mose. I... Don't have the whole day. Hurry up! Sorry. Sorry for everything. Um, thanks for making our biggest sale. And the last sale. Yes, I officially resign from your crappy company. My love, please join me. I promise, Natalia, you won't regret it. Let's go, Fraser. That's my wife. Lower your eyes, you creep. You'll never have her. She's mine. And you better get that right. Frazier hit Moe's right where it hurt, and it couldn't get worse for Moe's. He was trending on social media for all the wrong reasons. He became a laughingstock for apologizing to a subordinate, and he, of course, took it personally. Sorry, Father. Please, it won't happen again. Trust me, I won't disappoint you. <sighs> Sir, your drink. You idiot! How dare you make me wait? Pour the drink now! Sorry, sir. Wait a minute. You're that loser who's trending, right? Get lost before I kill you. Whoa! Easy, tiger. You don't want another reason to trend tonight. Gary, so glad you're here. Yeah, I saw what happened. Fraser, that bastard. He made me, Mose Ferlin, ap apologize. I want to break him. Hit him where it hurts the most. What do you want me to do? Natalia Laples. <laughs> what are you going to do to her? Sleep with her. Say goodbye to your wife, Fraser. <laughs> Here's your latte, Mr. Wilson. Thank you for not revealing my identity. No problem, Mr. Macklemore. Please, call me Fraser. I want you to do a few more favors for me. Of course! Please, don't hesitate! First, I need a separate house for me and my wife. I can't stay with my in-laws forever. Give me a week. I got the right place for you. What else? Need some money for now. I will balance it later. Don't worry, Fraser. All the money I have is because of your family. It's yours. Thank you so much, Mr. Wilson. Anything else? One last thing. Yes? Get my wife a job at your company. Yes, it's me. Yeah, I'm alone right now. It's surprising for me, too. Well, I don't know how Fraser did it, but at least he didn't lie to me this time. Just then, the door opened, and to Natalia's surprise, it was a shining black limo standing outside her house. In front of her stood Frasier, leaning against it. Whose limo is it? Yours. It's yours. What do you mean, Frasier? I walked out of the office with you thinking you have sorted it out finally. I know. Believe me, I got this. How? By splashing money on unnecessary things? It's not unnecessary. It's your dream car. And don't worry, I have more sales lined up. Let me get you a drink. Sit back and relax, my love. So you remember Han? I never forgot, Nat. All those years, I saw you go through so much trouble for me. Now, it's time to say goodbye to your worries and smile. You deserve it. Frazier deserved to feel like a man again, caring for his beloved wife who thought he was a good-for-nothing loser. After three years of troublesome marriage, this was the first time Frazier saw a smile on Natalia's face. They hopped into the limo and Frazier poured Natalia's favorite wine as they drove around the city. But as soon as they reached back home, their happiness was crushed. What's that? Oh no, it's our stuff on the porch. Looks like your father has finally kicked us out of the house. Natalia was in a state of shock after her own father kicked her out of their home. With no job and her own home, can Natalia depend on Frazier completely? Does Frazier really have everything sorted out like he claims? How long can Frazier hide his true identity? Hey guys, Frazier here. Listen to the full episode of Unraveling the Son-in-Law exclusively on Pocket FM app. Click the link in description to install the app now.